Okay, so I have a second channel, as many of you probably know, uh, that mainly focuses on hardware, where this channel I'm trying to primarily focus on software. Sometimes those things overlap, though. I'm doing a series currently where I'm getting serial connections into small ARM devices, routers, modems, such as that. And so far I'm working with a pogo plug device, which is very, very cheap. Uh, and I'm using a Pogo Plug Mobile, which has been discontinued. You can get them for seven bucks on Amazon currently, uh, shipped to your house. Um, so we've got a, a connection to that. I'm actually uh, connected in through the network to it now because we set up real connections to it. And um, the main point of a Pogo Plug device is that it has USB and SD card slots uh, to where you can use it for file storage, and normally you would use the Pogo Plug service. So you basically it's a cloud at your house that is using services online so that you have basically your own cloud at home. But we don't want to be dependent on their services, uh, the Pogo Plug services. So in previous videos, uh, which are done on my second channel, which uh, there should be a link in the description of this to a full playlist. Uh, so basically, I'm, this is part of a playlist for my second channel that I'm doing over here because it's mainly software related. Um, but we want to be able to share files remotely. So we're going to set up a basic web server. We already have, in my last video, set up BusyBox. This is something I've done on this channel before. Before I had my hardware channel, I've done hardware videos, and I've talked a lot about BusyBox and setting up HTTPD. One of the things I didn't go over then, because I didn't know how then, was setting up an index list uh, for the files that we have. So I can set up a web server, but it wouldn't be like with Apache or something, or even with Python, simple HTTP. Um, you, you would go and it would give you a list of directories if there was no index files. Well, how do you do that uh, with BusyBox? And the answer is you create a CGI-bin uh, folder where you put your executable scripts and if you name one index.cgi, if there's not an index HTML file in the folder, it will default to the CGI one. Well, I've actually already have created a nice little looking one uh, and put it up on GitHub. So let's go ahead and have a look at this. So, so far in this series, we've uh, mounted our USB and our SD card. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to my SD card now. So again, I'm logged in remotely to my uh, Pogo plug. So I'm gonna move into my MT, uh, MNT folder, my SD card folder. And here I have some files, um, but let's say I want to share some of these files. So I'm gonna make a, a folder that will be my web directory on this device. I'll just call it www here on my SD card. I'll move into that folder. And in here, I can say HTTPD, which is using the BusyBox's built-in HTTP server. And um, I'm gonna go, uh, you can tell it what port you want. Well, let me hit enter. Oh, I guess I, I thought it would give me the help file. So it basically, I just started the, the web server in this folder already without giving any options. So theoretically, I should be able to go to my web browser here and refresh this and you can see it says file not found and that's because there's there's no files in there but it definitely define an index file so if I go back here and I'll use vi and I'll create an index.html and I'll just say hello instead of hello world just because I'm lazy and I hit F5 here now it's defaulting to that HTML file that's great but let's say I have a bunch of files in here I just want to you know I'll just touch a few, touch one, touch two, touch three. Uh, I come back here, it's still, I'm just gonna see my my hello folder or file. And if I remove my index file, I'm gonna get a file not found. Well, again, we can create an index uh, file by creating a CGI folder and putting an index.cgi script in there that actually lists out stuff. And again, I've already created one, and if you go to my GitHub page, which is github.com forward slash metalx1000, also a reminder in the description of this video, I have notes to everything I'm doing in this series with this pogo plug, and notes to this part are also in there, uh, as well as links. But github.com forward slash x 1000 will bring you to all my repositories. Currently, I have 115, apparently. Uh, I just I, I throw everything online. Uh, I go to repositories here, and I'm just going to type in index. And you'll find one that's called directory index for HTTPD. And you'll see that it says directory index for BusyBox's HTTPD. And if you go in here, it basically has uh, the license to read me a test folder with just some basic little files and folders in it to, to test out. And then we have our CGI uh, file in here. And this is basically what it looks like. It basically generates some HTML code. And then it uses, it's, it's a shell script that basically lists all the files into 
that HTML code. So basically there's some some shell script right in the middle of our HTML file here. So you can look that over, but the way you use this, if you just want to use it, is you can go ahead and clone it or download a zip file. As I mentioned in the previous video, currently we're running, running BusyBox on this server, which has wget, a wget that doesn't support SSL certificates. So unfortunately I can't download directly from this web server because it all forwards to SSL, which is great, HTTPS. Um, so what I did, I just downloaded this file right here, this index is Apache running on my desktop computer. And right here, this master file, I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly, is the file that I need to download that contains that project. So let me go back to my pogo plug here. I am going to back out and I'm just gonna remove that, that, that directory I just created. And now I'm gonna say wget and I'm going to download that file from my desktop, 192.168.1.150 forward slash metal x 1000 forward slash master zip. Boom, I've downloaded it. And now I just need to unzip uh, master.zip. And it's created a directory called directory index for HTTP. We're just gonna rename that. We'll move that to be www. And so now we have our www folder. I can move into www and list out, and you can see it's that project we just downloaded. Uh, also, if I PS, you can see our HTTP server is still running. I'm just going to kill that process. PS again, make sure it's dead. Okay, so now that I'm inside my uh, HTTP, or my, I'm sorry, my www folder, the folder I want to be a web server, again, I just have to type in HTTPD and hit enter and my web server is back up and running and if I come here and I refresh I get a nice little looking index of all the files and I can go in my test folder here and see there there's another directory here I can click on a picture and it'll open up the picture so this is all running on the pogo plug um, if I come in here and I start creating new files so I'll just touch one touch two touch three and I go back to my web uh, directory here I can refresh and there are those files, they're, they're empty. And since they're not HTML files, it just downloaded an empty file. How about let me create a new file. I'll call it um, test.html, oh, vi. So I'm gonna use vi, which is a built-in text editor in BusyBox, uh, similar to Vim. And I am going to just say, I'll make a header, I'll say, hello world. I'll save that. And now if I go back to my web browser and refresh, there it is, test.html. When I click it, it brings me to that file. So setting up a web server is simple. All you have to do is go into that folder, type in HTTPD, and you have a web server running. Uh, if you want executable scripts, you put them in a CGI folder and make scripts and make them executable. If you want uh, to have a directory index, just download the file I created or just look at it and learn enough to make your own. It's, it's actually really, really simple, um, but that's it. Other things you might think, want to think about is if we do HTTP D dash dash help me, oh, help maybe, there we go. Uh, and there's also a good man file online. If you just uh, Google search BusyBox HTTPD, the first link that comes up will be uh, probably this OpenWRT wiki. It tells you everything you need to know, it gives you example codes. And I have videos on this as well if you just you know, go to my website, which is filmsbychris.com. Uh, go down to videos and type in um, HTTPD. You can actually find a number of videos I have talking about this subject, where I actually have this running on other little devices, uh, where I go over uh, putting password, password protecting your, your server. You can also put it on different ports. Uh, so by default, it's obviously gonna go to port 80. Uh, but you can do dash P and put it on another, and you can have more than one server running. So actually, let's do that. I'm going to back out and back out again, and I'm going to go to my USB drive. So we were just on my SD card. Now I want my USB drive. So I come in here, and I actually already put uh, that index thing on here. I can go in here and I can go into my directory folder, and I can HTTPD dash P, and I'll say port 8000. Now I go back to my web browser here, so if I just type in the IP address to my device, I get my index here that I can go through and look at all the different files.
But if I wanted to access the other one, I just change the port. So I say colon 8000, I'll hit enter. Ha ha! So now this is the stuff on my USB port, my USB drive. Again, I can touch one, two, three, and there they are. So I can have I, I can have many, many web servers. They're web servers, especially this BusyBox one, are so lightweight. I mean, think about it. It's part of the BusyBox binary, and the entire binary, which has all of these programs built into it, and it's still only 1.1 megabytes for this compile of it. Some compiles of it with all these in it are slightly less than a megabyte. Running a web server is not strainful on your smell. Security you have to keep in mind. But as far as uh, system processes, I mean, unless you're running Facebook or something, if you're just doing something for yourself, coworkers or family, it's nothing. Uh, and you can start up multiple instances. And I can should be able to do kill all HTTPD. And if I PS, they, they should all be dead now. So if I try refreshing this, that server doesn't exist. If I remove the port number, that one's killed as well. But I can start them back up again. Now that we've done that, we've done all this, we want that web server to run every time we, this, this system starts up. So if it gets rebooted for some reason, we want to make sure that the web server starts up. And if you watched the previous videos in this series, if we go into etc, etc, however you want to say it, init.d, uh, and then we can vim, there's a file called, oh, sorry, not vim, I don't have vim installed on here, uh, rcs, capital S, We'd enter down at the bottom here. You can see that I've added in, I have a line for uh, my USB and also the line for my SD card. I have that one coming out. So I only have one server running the dash H. So if you're in a folder and you run HTTPD, it starts in that folder, or you can specify which folder you want to be the home folder for your web directory. And so here in my startup script, I'm just saying, start up the web server by default on port 80 uh, and make the home directory this. And of course that's after I have already mounted that directory, which we went over in previous videos in this series. So again, I'm doing this on a pogo plug, but if you have BusyBox with HTTPD on any device, boom, you can start up a web server, no problem. And if you have space to actually store files, Think about uh, you know creating an index, of course, again, looking at uh, my GitHub page. In the description of this video, again, there's a link to all my notes on this project for everything, in, not just this video, but all things in this series on the Pogo plug. Check it out. All the code and links and everything is there. I thank you for watching. Please visit filmsbychris.com. And of course, that's a, a good place to look stuff up, as I showed you right here. You can search through all my videos. If you like my videos, think about supporting over at patreon.com. That's patreon.com forward slash mailx1000. I appreciate even a dollar a month is helpful. As always, I hope that you have a great day.